There are three things that Einstein and Musk have in common with their beliefs about God. But before we look at those, let's look at some other things they had in common. Both have been on the cover of Time magazine multiple times. They are neck for neck, stride for stride, with Einstein easing Musk out by a nose, being Time magazine's person of the century. However, recent revelations from Einstein's personal letters that were made public may have given them second thoughts. Despite this, his name has remained synonymous with the word genius. If someone calls you an Einstein, it's still an intellectual compliment. Let's now look at those three things that they had in common in their beliefs about God. Number one, their thoughts about Jesus. Listen to what Einstein said. I am a Jew, but I am enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. No man can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus. His personality pulsates in every word. And listen to Elon Musk speak about Jesus. I agree with the principles that Jesus advocated. Um, and th that the, you know, there's some, some, there's great wisdom in what, in, in the te teachings of, of Jesus, uh, and I agree with those teachings. Um, and things like turn the other cheek are, are very important because as opposed to an eye for an eye. Um, an eye for an eye leads everyone blind. So forgiveness, you know, is important and um, treating people as you would wish to be treated. Love thy neighbor as thyself, very important. Such praise from a godless world is common because so much of what Jesus said was plain common sense. Who could argue with, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. However, those who speak highly of Jesus and yet ignore what he said are either ignorant of much of what he said or they're merely mouthing platitudes. For example, he said that each of us will rise or fall depending on what we do with what he said. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Which brings us to the second thing they had in common. Both of them embraced something called Spinoza's God. This is a belief attributed to the 17th century Jewish philosopher, Barak Spinoza. As Einstein would say, I believe in the God of Spinoza. However, this philosophy is nothing more than age-old pantheism, the belief that God is merely part of nature and he doesn't involve himself in the affairs of mankind. This view is very popular with the world because it seems to get rid of moral accountability. If it's true, then anything goes. In reality, it's just a form of idolatry, where I make up my own God, one that's not at all interested or concerned about my sinful lifestyle. So why would Albert Einstein, a Jew, reject the God of the Bible? Why would he disregard the one who said, you shall not commit adultery? The answer is in those personal letters that were made public. Charles Spurgeon said, When a man argues against the word of God, follow him home, and see if you cannot discover the reason of his enmity to the word of the Lord. It lies in some sort of sin. And that brings us to the third thing that these two men had in common. Both of them went out of the way to say they didn't believe that God would hold them morally accountable. Einstein said, I believe in Spinoza's God who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of what exists, not in a God who concerns himself with the fates and actions of human beings. See his words? Not in a God who concerns himself with the fates, that is the condemning of people on Judgment Day, and actions, that is the sinful deeds of human beings. Listen to Elon say a similar thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm less convinced that there's, say, um, some, some super consciousness. That's his way of referring to God. Watching over our every movement. And kind That's of, his way of saying requiring moral accountability. And kind of evaluating it against some criteria. That's a reference to the Ten Commandments. Deciding whether we're going to go to one place or another when we die. That's a reference to heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. I think that's unlikely. Right. I, I think that's very unlikely too. Exactly. I mean, and, and, and it does beg the question, if there is some super consciousness, or consciousness, where did the super consciousness come from? And his reason for believing it's unlikely is that no one can answer the question, 
where did the super consciousness come from? He's saying that it can't be answered, so he's placing his bets on the fact that he's not going to be held morally accountable. Where did God come from? For the answer, let's go to popular and godless podcaster Joe Rogan as he enlightens a well-known scientist with some very simple logic. I was asked to give a talk to some bishops in the UK about cosmology. And I said, yeah, that'll be great fun. And so I went and gave him this talk. And, and, and at the end, I said, I've got some questions. So if the universe is eternal, and it might be, it might not have had a beginning. If it's eternal, what place is there for a creator? You know, that's that's a good question. Right. They didn't they didn't have an answer, of course, right? An eternal but creator. Right. They didn't they didn't have an answer, of course, right? An eternal but, creator. Now watch this. Have you heard of Einstein? Einstein? Yeah. He believed in what was called Spinoza's God. Do you know what that is? No, I never heard that before. Do you know what Spinoza's God is? No, can you explain that? You're identical twins? Identical twins. Who was born first? Me, actually. You have a one right here. He has a two. You have a one? <laughs> Just yeah. to remind yourself? <laughs> You're right. Can yeah. I have a look at that again? Yeah, go ahead, you have a one written there and you have a two. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So, do you think there's an afterlife? Um, yeah, I definitely believe in something like that. There'd have to be some kind of, like, higher power for sure. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Do you think there's an afterlife? I, I believe there's an afterlife. Um, there's definitely a higher power. You're afraid of death? I'm not afraid of death. What about you? Um, just a little bit, but to be honest, like, kind of been going through, like, some changes and kind of been growing accustomed to, like, my own mortality, you know what exactly. I mean? So, so you've given up? No. I mean, I come to peace, like, you know, like, we're all going to die and... You know, it's really not that bad. Just gotta enjoy life and make the. Make it's the not that bad. Death is horrific. It's horrible. Don't you love I, life? I do. I do love life, though. Yeah, you but don't want to give up. I don't want to give up. But what I'm saying is, like, it's not. It's not bad, though. Like, like death. Like, it's nothing to fear now. So what's God got that we haven't? I say to each his own. I mean, your God could be different from my God. You know what I mean? Um, Can you make up your own God to suit yourself? Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. You believe in God? Um, something like that. I would say there's like, like a. Like some kind of something there, like divine like force, you know? Have you heard of Einstein? Einstein? Yeah. He believed in what was called Spinoza's God. Do you know what that is? No, I never heard that before. Do you know what Spinoza's God is? No, could you explain that? Yeah, it's pantheism. Do you know what pantheism is? No, I'm not familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, God is in the flowers and the birds and the trees. He's part of nature. He doesn't care about humanity. He's just left us to do our own thing. Do you think that's right? Uh, you know what? I mean, we got free will, so I mean, it's what you make it. Zachary, you said you love life. You should be doing everything you can to find if there's a way past death. You don't want to give up. Do you read the Bible? Um, no, I haven't, but I mean, it kind of come from that background for sure. My grandma would read, read me the Bible. She did? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, but for sure. I would definitely say like that helped like me believe in some kind of higher power for sure. Do you know what the message of the Bible is? Let me give you my synopsis. Yeah. Old Testament, God promised to destroy death. Yeah. The New Testament tells us how he did it. Do you know how God destroyed death? Um, no, not, not too sure. Shouldn't you find out? Yeah, definitely. I would say that. This has been a minute, man, for <laughs> sure. Do you know what death is according to the Bible? Um, uh, a release? It's wages. Wages? Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know that? Mm -mm. Yeah, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. God has paid you in death for your sins. It's your wages. It's like a judge looks at a heinous criminal that's murdered three girls. He says, you've earned the death sentence. It's your wages. This is what's due to you. This is what we're going to pay you. And sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you capital punishment. The soul that sins, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. Zach, do you think you're evil enough for God to put you to death for your sins? Do you think God is justified um, in paying you in death for your sins, giving you capital punishment? I mean, do you think you're a good person or are you evil? Say I'm probably like in between. I mean, I think everybody is. <laughs> like, I don't know. Okay, let's see if you've earned your wages. How many lies have you told in your life? Good, yeah, man. Too many to count. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Too many to count? Too many to count, man. So what do you call someone who tells that many lies? A liar. <laughs> liar. So what are you? <laughs> I guess, I liar. would, <laughs> I guess it's like a liar, man. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever stolen something? Uh, yeah. I've stolen something. Okay, have you ever stolen something? <laughs> Maybe, man. Okay, what do you call someone who steals? A stealer, man. A thief. A thief, yeah. <laughs> so what are you? 
No, I wouldn't say I'm a thief. But oh, because <laughs> you're a lying thief. <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? I try not to, man. Have honestly. you ever done it even once? Yeah, I've, I've had. And what about you? Probably. Do you love your mum? Yeah, I do love my mum. Would you use her name as a cuss word? You hit your thumb with a hammer and you want to express disgust, so instead of using the S word, you use your mother's name. Um, no, it's some disrespect. That'd be horrible. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Because you love your mother and you respect her, but you don't respect God. Yeah. You've taken his holy name, the one that gave you a mother and gave you life and used it in place of that S word to express disgust. Do you know what that's called? Disrespect, man. Well, it's blasphemy. Yeah, exactly. It's punishable by death in the yeah. Old Testament. Guys, I appreciate your honesty. Now, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Um, I mean, I think everybody has, man. I think it's all, like kind of natural. I know. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I mean, I agree with him, but... Now that I'm getting older, it's like I don't really look at those interactions as a, more friends. More, you know what I mean. Okay. I try to make friends rather than see it like as something that's treated as an object. You know. When did you last look at pornography? My phone, just looking at like, yeah. like you okay. know, just I mean? recently, yeah, huh? probably, yeah. 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 And what about you? When did you last look at pornography? I don't need to, man. <laughs> so you got a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. Having sex out of marriage? Excuse me. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so I think you're fornicating. So let me let me just let me give you guys a summation. This is for you to judge yourself. I'm not judging you. Yeah, yeah. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty. If we all got what we deserved, man, like I think we'd all be dead. So yeah, you've earned your wages. Yeah. Would you be innocent or guilty on Judgment Day? Uh, I think I'll be guilty, but. You know what, I mean, if the Creator is as kind as He is, I think He'd hey, find a place in His heart so where He could forgive us all. You know? you know what you've just done? You've just broken the first and the second of the Ten Commandments. Do you know what it is? Tell me, tell me. You shall have no other gods before me, that's the first. Yeah. And the second is don't make yourself a false god. Okay, okay. And I did that before I was a Christian. I made a god that I felt comfortable with. Yeah. A god that didn't care about right and wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. or justice and truth. But the God of the Bible says, all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer, no fornicator will inherit God's kingdom. So man, you've earned your wages, you're in big trouble on Judgment Day. So what can you do to get right with God? Do you know? I ask for forgiveness in my heart and just just ask Him that that He just finds it to where and I can even forgive myself. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's out of my hands. Just Andrew, that won't help you. You need something else. Do you know what you need to do? Your grandmother would have told you. Mm. I'm not sure, man. It's been a minute. Well, you do know, but you just don't understand it. Yeah, Jesus yeah. died for the sin of the world. You've heard that on the yeah. cross? Oh, yeah, I've heard, yeah. Most people know that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. Do you remember his last words on the cross? It is finished. Do you know why he said that? Died for us, yeah. That was it. Yeah, that yeah. was it. Yeah, that was we it. We broke the law. He paid the fine. He gave, us, he gave us his one and only son, so he could so he could die for all of us. If you're in court and you've got a stack of speeding fines, yeah. even though you're guilty, yeah. the judge will let you go if someone pays the fine. Yeah. He says, oh, "This is stack of speeding fines here, but someone's paid him. You're out of here." And he can do that, which is legal and right and just. Yeah. And because of Jesus paying the fine on the cross, God can legally take the death sentence off you and let you live forever. He can grant you everlasting life as a free gift. You can walk out of his courtroom on Judgment Day. Zach, are you listening? Oh, yes. Please don't be distracted. This is so important, especially this part. Christ died for our sins, rose from the dead, defeated death. And if you'll simply repent of sin, turn from it. Don't say I'm a Christian, but you fornicate and lie and steal and lust. That's playing the hypocrite. You've got to be genuine. And then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. Now, if you're on a plane 10,000 feet up, why would you put on a parachute? So I don't hit smack the ground and my, my, my whole body explodes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you want to live. Yeah, I want to live. And your motivation is fear. Yeah. And that fear is your friend, not your enemy, because it's causing you to Survival. put on a parachute. Yeah. yeah. And guys, I've tried to put the fear of God on you because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. In that sense, the fear is your friend, not your enemy, because it'll show you're in great danger. Man, if you two die today, you've got God's promise you'll end up in hell. Did you know that? Because you've earned your wages, you've sinned against him. The soul that sins, it shall die. After this, the judgment, scripture says. And I don't want you guys to end up in hell. You don't realize this, but I love you, I care about you. And I'm so pleased you're listening. Are you going to think about what we talked about? Yeah, definitely. It's pretty, a, uh, pretty deep. Yeah, change my sure. perspective on things. Okay, so I'm going to try and coagulate what I've just said. Because <clears throat> it's so important you get an understanding of this. Unless you repent, you're going to perish. 
God commands you to repent because of Judgment Day. He doesn't want to damn you. So when you walk away from here in the quietness of your heart, yield your life to Christ. Your grandmother would have prayed for you. and Maybe today it's the answer oh, to her prayers. Yeah, yeah, prayer. yeah, yeah. My grandma's she book. wants you to repent and trust in the Savior so, you, so she can see you in heaven, not in hell. Do you guys have a Bible at home? Yeah, I do. I do. And do you? Yeah, yeah. She actually got me one before she died, so yeah. I, I, I haven't looked at it recently. I, I know when I was going through a tough time for COVID, I was looking at it for a minute. There was a few verses that were helping me. I can't really recite them at the top of my head. but So, Andrew, when are you going to repent and trust in Christ? Man, maybe even tonight when I get home. <laughs> Why not now? Yeah, exactly. And what about you, Zach? When are you going to repent and trust Christ? Yeah. When? It's now, man. Can I pray with you? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Father, I pray for these two young men that this day they'll think about their secret sins and understand what you did on the cross and find a place of genuine sorrow and repentance and faith in Jesus. And today may they pass from death to life because of your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, amen. Can I give you guys a gift? Yeah. Okay. This is a book that I wrote. You wrote this? Yeah, that's what I do. It's pretty cool. Definitely, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell and make sure you don't miss the Living Waters podcast. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about the cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form. And who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up. There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.